a new commandment is given to us. We are called to love one another. God be with you. And also with you. Together, let us pray. Creator God, by your hands you have mixed us, molded us, pressed us, formed us. You send us out into the world as a of your fingerprints made into us. As we become your body in the eating of your bread, bless those with whom we share your bread and sleep, that as we are broken and open, you may be known to them, and as they are broken. reading from 1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink, this, drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Gospel of Jesus according to John. Now, before the festival of the Passover, 
Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, but my feet only, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love for another. The Gospel of the Lord. Please pray with me. Dear God, you commanded us through your son, Jesus, to love one another just as you loved us. Give us the strength, the courage, and the knowledge of our own self-worth to be able to live up to your command. Amen. Please be seated. I don't know really where to look tonight. It's a little challenging but I'll do my best. Uh, Today we're celebrating Monday Thursday, as you might have guessed, the start of the Paschal Tridium. If you think I pronounced that wrong, don't tell me, because I've actually asked a couple different people. Um, But the Tridium straddles two different liturgical seasons, Lent and Easter. Monday Thursday is the fulcrum between those two seasons, the end of Jesus' ministry here on earth and the coming crucifixion and resurrection. 
Today we commemorate the new commandment, as, as you've heard, the mandate that Jesus gave his disciples. The mandate, the origin of the word mandi, that we are called to love one another, just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. The synoptic gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, uh, in those gospels, this night is the Passover supper. But that is not the case in John. The supper, the last supper does not appear in the gospel of John. In the gospel of John, the day before Jesus is crucified is not the Passover supper, but rather takes place before the festival of the Passover. The last night marks the end of Jesus' public ministry. We find Jesus here alone with his disciples for his final great discourse. And this chapter begins with the act of foot washing. Just as we heard in, in the gospel, this is the act that acts out what Jesus is about to tell his disciples. He acts out love. This is not the Passover meal in John, but this would rather have been the time where they were preparing the lamb for the Passover sacrifice. As everything with John, this is intentional. John is deliberate in his writing and his symbolism his, and his words, the actions they describe, the symbols John uses are chosen with care. Jesus will be betrayed. He will be murdered. And in the mind of Ju Judas, he will be sacrificed for the good of everyone else. But Jesus is clear. God doesn't require sacrifice. What Judas does in turning Jesus over, what happens the next day, is not what God intends. It is what humans do. Our God is a God of love. And on Jesus' last night on earth, he tells us this. He acts it out. He shows that love to his disciples. Jesus says, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You should also love one another by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Interestingly, the Greek word for new also means to renew. So this command to love one another was not new to the disciples. This shows up in Hebrew scriptures, scriptures that Jesus and the disciples would have been familiar with. But here Jesus renews this. And this love was shown to Jesus himself less than a week before these events take place. Six days earlier, we find Jesus in Bethany, just a few miles from Jerusalem where tonight's action is taking place. In John chapter 12, we read that six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at table with him. Then Mary took a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. Mary showed Jesus this love. And Judas criticized Mary for it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought the nard so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. Jesus says this and reminds them that they only have him for a little longer, as he did tonight also. Jesus and Mary both knew that Jesus would not be here on this earth much longer, which made these acts of love that much more poignant. In a few minutes, you're, you'll be invited to wash someone's feet and have yours washed. So... Let's, let's talk about this foot washing thing for, for a minute. First of all, we don't normally have people washing our feet in this moment in time in this society where we live, except maybe on this night or maybe if you're getting a pedicure. So if it makes you feel odd and uncomfortable, that's, that's okay. But the act of foot washing would not have been foreign to the disciples. The manner in which it is carried out, however, was highly unusual. Foot washing is weird to us, and the way it was done in this story was weird to the disciples also, but not in the same way. 
it meant something very different. Servants did the foot washing. That was common. The host didn't do the foot washing. But Mary did, and Jesus does in this story tonight. Peter being Peter, of course, resists the acts, this act of love. Susan Hyland, associate professor of New Testament at Emory, she wrote that Peter resists Jesus' act of love. Jesus does not tell us why Peter refuses this and thus leaves room for our own reasons to enter in. Perhaps Peter's embarrassed, embarrassed by his master's lowly form or he can't stand to be reminded of the grace that's offered to him through Christ and his need for it. Perhaps Peter is so tied to social convention that this prevents him from recognizing this gift. He sees a role reversal that can only be a joke. I think Peter wants those roles to be reversed. I think when he says to Jesus, or when Jesus says to him, rather, unless I wash you, you have no share with me, I imagine an embarrassed chuckle from Peter at this point. Well, well then, if that's the case, then go ahead and wash my, not just my feet, but my hands and my head also. In this passage, Jesus is both the servant and the host. Jesus knows who he is. He is self-possessed. He is Lord and teacher. And after washing the disciples' feet, he says, So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash another's feet. Servants are not greater than their masters, nor messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. You, you may have noticed in the gospel that Anne-Marie proclaimed tonight that there's a big uh, missing piece. The lectionary leaves out verses 18 to 35a. And these missing passages are about Judas and his betrayal. And the verses immediately following this are about Peter and his denial. This entire time, while they're eating together, while Jesus is washing their feet, the denier was there. Peter was there, of course, and so was Judas. John tells us that Jesus was troubled in spirit, but Judas had his feet washed by Jesus. Judas, uh, Jesus knew that Judas was go- what Judas was going to do, and God still washed his feet and ate with him. Professor Joy J. Moore, professor of biblical preaching at Luther Seminary, says this. Jesus washes the feet of his betrayer and his denier. The hard word that Jesus gave us was not to love our neighbor. We use that language so much now, she says, but I think the hard word is that, that Jesus gave us is to love our enemies. I don't see us speaking that. This is powerful work that is desperately needed at this moment, she says. Jesus fed and washed Judas, and he commands us to love and to not love on our own terms. His command is clear. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. This is the powerful work. This is the hard work. It always is. But I think this year will be more challenging than ever as our nation and our world are so divided. Just as Jesus was troubled in spirit, we're allowed to have our feelings. But just as Jesus never treated Judas as the enemy, but rather recognized his humanity, we're called to do the same. We're called to treat those with whom we disagree with. We're called to treat them with humanity and dignity. How will we live out this call to love not only our neighbors, but also our enemies? How might you do this individually? How might we do this collectively as a community at St. Mark's? Amen.
Have mercy on us, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, hear our prayers. Wash us through and through. And cleanse us from our sin. Inspire in us true amendment of life. And in us all of our offenses. Restore those who are broken, those who hunger and thirst, those who cry out for justice, and those who live under the threat of terror. That they may rejoice. Sustain those who are ill, those in pain, and those who are lonely. Renew them with your bountiful spirit. Keep all those whom we have lost in your abiding peace. That they may be no further to and eternal life. Let us now pray for our own needs and those of others. Lord, I thank you tonight for Karen's and my children, for Andrew and Eliza and Tim, and for their grace and mercy on us and their accompaniment in some of the difficult places in the world. This is my prayer. Amen. Amen.
Together, let us pray. O oh God, our Creator, have mercy on us according to your unfailing love. Amen. The peace of God be always with you. And also with you. Well, good evening. Well, we're glad you're here tonight. Um, my name is Michelle Morgan. I'm the rector here. And I want to greet you in the name of all of the folks here. I used to go to a church, and the um, number one on the header list is ministers, the people of St. Mark. So um, I stand in greeting for all of us. We're glad you're here walking with us, either here or online. Um, hang on, I have notes. I know they're here somewhere. Oh, there they are. Um, I just want to let you know that we still have another couple of services happening here. As Tom mentioned, we're in the, we're in the throes of it now. Now it's going on, as they say. No one says that anymore. Okay. Um, but tomorrow, it's very exciting. Tomorrow, um, we are having two services of Good Friday. Um, at noon and at 7 o'clock, and we're also at 3 o'clock doing Stations of the Cross honoring migrants in our midst. Um, we're going to walk around the U.S. Capitol with a processional cross, and if you ever want to have a public witness and have people look at you like you're a big old weirdo, this is your opportunity, <laughs> just going to say. Um, but it's, it's a great opportunity to pray, and I think that if any place on earth needs some prayers, maybe Congress is one of those. Um, but at 11.35-ish, uh, we are having a, um, I hear 50 to 80, 80 young men from Wales are going to come and do a concert for us. So if you're available to come and give them an audience, I think that would be a um, um, service that would be well, well thought of. Um, so please know that you are welcome to come to that. If you want to know when any of those services are happening, it's on page 17 of the bulletin. Um, also, um, the donation tonight, if you look at the top of page 9, um, the Good Friday offering is a long-standing tradition in the Episcopal Church. And um, here at St. Mark's, we also add Monday, Thursday in. But all offerings that we get in this night and tomorrow night, or tomorrow day and night, we um, give away. Uh, Diocese of Jerusalem, um, mostly, but this year, as we know, that's going on in Gaza um, has rendered a lot of uh, structures pretty obsolete. So 
We have made the decision to give the money to the U.S. Relief and Works Agency of the Palestinian Refugees. Um, it's targeted humanitarian aid. And as we know, 70% um, of, of the people killed in Gaza war are women and children who are suffering. And we see impending crisis of um, starvation coming. So this is a hope that we can make a little bit of a dent um, in food aid in the area. So please know um, if you have the opportunity. Um, I, I don't have much cash in my pocket, but I'm going to just throw it all in the basket. And there's also a QR code. So if you have some capacity to generously give, I ask you to do that. Um, and then last but not least, I just want to thank you all. Um, it's one of these things where um, we, uh, we run around like um, mad, mad, mad hatters trying to get bulletins done and everything put in uh, to bed the way that we need to. But in a, especially a service like this, I look around and I think how much gratitude I have for all of you um, for bringing food and putting up with a different sign-up system than you were used to and finding your names on the table and being kind to us as you did all of that. Um, I want to thank the choir for all of their work and their gift of music. Um, it really is, for me, you dial back into my childhood, all the Easter services, all the Christmas services. The second you all start singing, I am a little girl sitting with my mom and dad. And it's very touching for me every year. So I'm so grateful for the hymns that you sing and the, and the joy and the presence you bring to it. So thank you. And the same can be said of the vergers, um, doing all the work, um, hupping chairs and water and pitchers and keeping us on pace. The video team, um, which is extensive, um, showing up and uh, bugging us to get bulletins in their hands so they know what they're trying to take a shot of. Um, they're incredibly flexible and I'm grateful to them. And most of all, I want to thank the three of you because um, I have all these clergy colleagues who are like, what are you doing when Chris is gone? And I'm like, I don't feel alone. The three of you have made this week really, I wouldn't say easy. <laughs> I wouldn't say bearable. No, I would use the bearable is what I'd go with. Um, Holy Week is one of my favorite times of the year. And I know that everyone worries about me that I work too much in this time. But this, this ability to walk this time and this space with someone that I have followed ever since I was a little girl is a gift. And to walk it with this community time and time again is um, its just a delight. It's just a pleasure. So I thank you all. I thank you all for being here tonight. I thank you for your generosity. Um, I hope to see you sometime tomorrow and definitely on Easter. On Friday, you'll hear Anne-Marie preach. Um, and on Easter Sunday, it's actually just Sunday, but we'll throw Easter, so, you know. Um, on Sunday, I'll be preaching, and um, I look forward to what I might say, and definitely what you might say. And Tom, thank you for your sermon as well. Um, let us walk in love as Christ loved us.
Our service continues on page 10. Let us enter the mystery. God is always with us. God's Spirit is upon us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Holy One. Let us give thanks to God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Holy One, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever proclaim the glory of your name. give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in those last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you've delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you've brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he'd given it to you, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And he gave, after he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Holy One, we proclaim the mystery of faith. We offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O source of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body and blood of, of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in harmony with your Christ. Bring us to that heavenly country with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty and holy one, now and forever. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation.
we recognize this as God's table set before us, and this bread and wine is God's food for all. Therefore, Therefore whoever we are, from earth, So if there are people who are considered captains of their table, please come on up and receive bread. If you'd like gluten-free, um, Lydia's gonna be standing right on that vent and she'll have it. And the choir, Tom and I will come and commune you. Hopefully, all will be well.
I invite you to stand as you are able. Let us pray. Jesus, you have put your life in our hands. Now we put our lives in yours. Take us.
Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. I shall teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness, O God of my salvation. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice, but you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. Be favorable and gracious to Zion, and rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will be pleased with the appointed sacrifices, with burnt offerings and oblations. Then shall they offer young bullocks upon your altar. Thank you. 